So how can anybody know what's right for you? You do grief how you do grief. However it shows up. And if you're not ready to surrender, then don't surrender. If you're not ready to accept, then don't accept. But just know from me, my experience, when I did, it lessened the pain. Welcome to Friday Night Live. It's just me. Um, this video was sparked by a post that I saw in a group that I'm in. And this group is for parents with loss. I'm a parent of loss. And what I wanted to talk about is the way I see grief, the way I see loss right now. And what I mean by right now is I've had, I guess, for, for um, in an effort to describe these experiences, two sets. Um, there was a time in my 20s and 30s where I had um, a few miscarriages and then I lost my fiance um, to a fatal car accident about 10 months before my father and godfather died of inoperable cancer. And zooming forward in the last five years, um, I lost my son to a custody battle and he was sent thousands of miles away to live with his biological father. And this was about six months before my 18 year old was in a fatal car accident. My beautiful Sophia was in a fatal car accident shortly after her, um, her graduation. What I want to talk to you about today is the way in which grief unfolded in my life. So there were a series of losses. The first set, I guess you could say that I was running from the losses. I, I would do whatever I could to try and hide from the fact that I had these losses. And I saw them, my perception at that time was that it was happening to me. Life was coming at me and I needed to run and protect myself from this inevitable happening. Fast forward to the last five years, shortly after my son was sent away, I guess you could say all the losses, all the trauma, all the experiences of the past, I carried with me, so I was living yesterday, but I was living it now in this present moment. And that present moment, again, was uh, the day that my son was, was sent away. Something inside of me broke. Something, I guess you could say, I was contracted to the point of so much physical pain and so much agony and so many tears that I just broke. My husband, Rudy, says that your heart doesn't break, it stretches. And I guess I describe this as, I broke, but I broke open. <laughs> I broke open to, <sighs> to acknowledging that it did happen. That led to me embracing, <sighs> embracing that it did happen and embracing the pain. <sighs> and you know what? Once I embraced it, it wasn't as painful anymore. There was an enveloping of pain and tears but an amazing feeling of love and compassion. I like to describe that as sublime love. That is our whole nature of spirit. That is that beautiful essence of God that births our human experience. With the embracing, a new way of seeing began to arise. 
I saw death, loss as inevitable. It's inevitable. And it happens to everybody. There isn't anybody out there who hasn't experienced loss. And we all experience loss differently. This post that I read was about grief shaming. And I will read it for you. It's the term identified by Megan Devine to describe the act of dismissing or downplaying another person's grief, the act of comparing grief experiences, and the act of judging how someone does their grief. I want to say right now, and this goes to the the experts also, because I was given so many books, so many books, probably a hundred, on what to expect with grief. Nobody can tell you what to expect. <laughs> I take those books and throw them out the window and call bullshit on them. Nobody can tell you how to do life. <laughs> You are unique to you, and you all express differently. There's 7.8 billion beautiful, unique expressions on this earth, and that's just humans. Because that same intuitive essence that is running through our blood and telling our hearts to breathe our hearts to breathe, telling our hearts to beat and our lungs to breathe, is running through the birds, is running through the grass, is running through your beloved pets, is running through each and every beautiful expression on this earth. How can any, any one of them be the same? So how can anybody know what's right for you? You do grieve how you do grieve however it shows up and if you're not ready to surrender then don't surrender if you're not ready to accept then don't accept but just know from me my experience when I did it lessened the pain the pain wasn't gone which brings me to my next point is we cycle as beautiful as expressions of this whole nature of spirit we cycle there's a contraction and an expansion and I invite you to look around at life right now you know as females you contract and expand to birth these beautiful babies these beautiful children you know that you have a cycle you know you ovulate the trees lose their leaves <laughs> the snakes lose their skin and the gecko that's peeking at me from behind the camera loses his tail. But it grows back. So we contract and we expand. And with the contractions, our inner world of perception changes. We see life differently. I describe to my students that when we contract, we kind of have all of the filters of life. And we kind of have to see through that. And sometimes it gets a little foggy, if you will. It isn't as clear as it is during our expanded state, our inevitable expanded state. And the thoughts that arise during our contracted states are indicators of where we are they reveal our inner state of being they tell us that we're in a natural inevitable state of contraction and knowing that we contract and expand I paid less attention to the content of what I was thinking and more attention to how I was feeling and knowing that this is my inevitable contraction and soon there will be an expansion. So this is just how grief looks for me. Be gentle with yourself. 
acknowledge yourself as this unique expression of God. Expressing uniquely. And if you've lost something, a job, a home, a beloved pet, a car, a child, that is your experience to experience with your whole nature of spirit, your own unique nature of spirit. There isn't a right or a wrong, a good or a bad. You're taking too long or that was too short because I've heard them all. You're just you. So think again when somebody is experiencing something that you may think to yourself that you would be experiencing differently. Remember that you're unique. You're your own human. You have your own whole nature of spirit that expresses differently. And when you're hurting, I invite you to acknowledge. Acknowledge what it is. Embrace it, because there's no changing it. There's no running away from it. It's inevitable. And remember, we cycle. I just wanted to share that. And that I love you. Each and every one of you.